because it's ready to go. Hopefully we've got some people on here. No, we can't. We're up three. <laughs> You're all excited. Um, if you don't want her drinking out of your water cup, though, you are going to have to put her in another room. Do I pour water cup? No, that's mommy's water cup. You should have your, your water cup. Where's your brushes? Okay, okay your water cup's right there, baby. Turn this down. All right. We have a few people on here right now, Bri Bri. Okay, so just get your stuff ready. So which one stuff should I use? You are going to use both of those actually, but you are going to want to get some water in your water cup. Yeah. Okay. So anybody out there watching right now? If you guys want to get started, get your materials laid out, and go ahead and get some water in your water cup. I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. We're just going to chill here for a few minutes. Let everybody get on. Whoever wants to start getting their stuff ready, you can do that now. Because then we're going to dive straight in. My daughter's here with us, so she will be a good telltale sign of how long you guys need. And also, if you guys have any questions before we get started, uh, there is a chat feature, whether you're on your mobile or you're on a laptop or computer, it'll be on your right-hand side. But go ahead and ask me a question. Just know that it's going to take about 15 seconds for my response to come through live. If you guys want right now, just go ahead and uh, you can give a little shout out. Let me know who's here. So I have nine more minutes to go, so you guys are early birds. Again, also if you're hearing background noise or you're hearing my voice doubling, that tells me I have something on that shouldn't be on. And so let me know if you guys are hearing feedback, and then I'll make adjustments as well. 
Barista. Where's Kara? No, honey, you can't do that. You have to you have to put her in another room. Oh. She's gonna drink your, your paint water. That's not good. Alright, let me just double check we have everything. I'm going to take my paint tops off. Alright. Okay. Track the whole wall. Wow. I want to already live so you don't know. We're on silent mode. Because it is. Everything. And they can also see you on there. <laughs> and now they can really see you on there. Don't you want to see yourself live? Yeah. This is you live. You're right there. Oh, you are live, girl. This is my daughter, Brianna. She's going to be painting with us tonight. And that will also just kind of tell us, you know, how fast we can go. Can you say hi? You've got some of your neighbors and your friends on there right now. Hi. Okay. Go get Oh, oh, what did I tell you? How did you pass that? I put you in the toilet bathroom. I'll be right back. I've got to get this kitty out. Hey, Bri Bri. Bri Bri. You want to get out your canvas first? It's inside your little baggie. Okay. All right. You got to open, open your canvas. Take off the plastic if you have not already done right. so. You guys have plastic on your canvas. Okay guys, we still have five more minutes, so letting everybody get on and then we will get started. But in the meantime, <clears throat> like I said, get all your supplies out, spread everything out, make sure you got a nice, good working surface. You might get messy, you might get on your clothes, sorry parents, that does happen. So with that, I'm going to go grab one more thing and we'll get started here in about five minutes. We're going to need the chip brush first. Hmm? 
What's that, Angel? Okay. Almost time to get started, you guys. Sorry guys, I'm typing. <laughs> you guys shouldn't be scared. The number one thing you got to realize is just take a deep breath. We're here to have fun. It's easy. It doesn't get much easier than this. We're just going to jump right in here. About two more minutes. So you guys, if you have your supplies, take off the tops of your paint. Go ahead and lay everything out and make sure you put water in your water cups. Because you'll definitely need that. And then we'll get started. The channel name is Rosina Ranch Paint Nights for YouTube. And then if you're looking for the Facebook, it's going to be RR Paint Nights. You can do a search and then that will pop up if you guys want to put your pictures at the end. Once you guys are all done, have them upload a picture of what you guys did. All right, you guys, so it is officially seven o'clock. Now, what I want you guys to know, because this is a beginner class, it's gonna be really, really easy. What we're gonna do today is our dandelion summer painting. I know there's a lot of dandelions popping up in all of our wonderful front yards and you guys just have to pick them because they're so much fun, but it's also a really cool paint idea. Now, what you guys are going to do, if you guys haven't already, you guys have these little kits. And if you're working with these kits, fantastic. If you're working with your own stuff, that's great too. But what you need to do is take these apart, just open it up, and you're going to have a nice little work surface to get dirty. And inside each of these kits, we've got our little eight by 10 that we're gonna be working with. And you guys also have three different brushes or things that we're gonna be using today. So the first brush that we're gonna to use today is this guy. And this guy is called a chip brush. Now, what we're going to be using the second round is this little guy. You guys can see him. This is our number eight watercolor brush. And then, just to make it a little bit easier, everybody should have 
a little bit of Q-tips. I think there should be four all rubber band together. Keep them rubber band. You need these all close together. All right. And then you guys are going to have also a water cup, some napkins, which you might need additional later on. And then you guys are going to have three different paints, your white, your primary yellow, and your primary blue. All right. So the way that the chat works, you guys, is the number one thing I'm going to have a hard time with is trying to keep a good pace for you. Because this is a beginner's class, you guys can just, some of you are going to be a little bit faster, some are going to be a little slower. I do plan on wrapping this up in an hour, so it is going to be a little bit quick. And there's going to be paint that's going to dry in between. So what I need you guys to do, just so you're not sitting there typing away, is just say H. H is in house. If you put H in the chat feature, that tells me, you guys, hey, hold on, Lisa, I need to slow down. So remember, if you guys want me to pause, if I see enough H's on the chat, that means, hold on, give us a minute, we're still trying to catch up. I also have my daughter here with me, so I will judge based on where she's at, where you guys are probably at. So with that being said, um, again, yes, why for yes. So are you guys ready to go? Has everybody pretty much got their setup? We're going to be using the chip brush, and we're going to get started, and I'm going to change over the screen so you guys can get a close-up. And I will wait for you guys to give me that response. Let everybody know. Say why if you guys are ready. Are you ready? Yep. All right. So I'm going to switch over to our screen where you guys are going to see what we're working with. Okay, you guys, there's a few of you who are yes, so I'm going to give you guys a little moment to make sure you have that water cup filled up. And we are going to get started first with this guy. This is our chip brush. The only problem we are going to have with the chip brush is going to be these little guys tend to shed sometimes. So if it does get stuck in your paint, just go ahead and try and wiggle it on out and flick it out because sometimes he does like to shed. Okay, so with our chip brush, we are going to just dive straight in. And as you guys can see, we have our canvas and this is called landscape. When you guys, um, when you're referring to a picture and somebody says portrait, it usually means lengthwise is straight up and down. When somebody says landscape, we're going to go lengthwise side by side this way. So let's go ahead and grab our chip brush. And you guys can see we've got our colors over here and our reference photo below. If it does get a little too fast, you guys, make sure you type that H because that lets me know that you are not ready to move on. And we're going to take this chip brush and we are going to dip it into our white paint. Get a fairly decent size amount. You see what I have right here? And with this chip brush, I'm just going to touch my blue on one tiny corner of my chip brush. So I want you guys to take a look right there. Are we all on the same page? Now what I want you guys to do is not at the very, very upper left corner. I want you just to go ahead and find a nice spot and plop it down. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to slowly start working a circle in. Just 
slowly start making that circle. Yep, see? And I'm going to keep continuing this circle out. I'm just going to keep continuing it out. And you guys are going to see it's a little streaky, but you want those streaks because if it doesn't have streaks, it's kind of boring. You guys see how it's got a little bit of streaks in there? We're just keep, I keep making my circles larger and larger until, uh, you know what, I'm even going outside of our little box here because it's all fun. And the other thing is, you guys, your painting's not going to look like mine. My painting's not going to look like yours. This is all fun. If you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Because we're here to just relax and paint and have a good time. Now what I'm going to do with this is I want this little circle for me personally. I made this a little blue, so I'm going to go in and just without washing my brush, I'm going to dip that into my white again. And I'm going to just work some white with little circular motions. Work some white in there. So you guys got a nice big circle started in your upper left hand corner. And we're going to look at this kind of like the moon. The sun is setting. We got a little glare coming in. This beautiful little dandelion setting. Dandelions blowing in the breeze. Now, if you guys are ready for the next part, what we're going to do is we're going to take our chip brush and we're going to dip it half in white over here. And I'm going to dip the other half completely in the blue. So you guys are going to have half white, half blue dipped on your brush. And this is where we can just kind of get a little bit more free. And we're going to start on the outside of that circle. And we're just going to work again. We're blending. Blending these two circles together with a little bit more blue. Now, as you guys can see, one thing, I, I know it's in my room, it's really, really hot right now. And you could just blend it to where it kind of just starts fading into that first circle. And then just working your way out. Just keep working your way out. Doesn't have to be perfect, you see? When it starts getting streaky, what that tells me is that my canvas is thirsty. It needs more paint. And that's okay. I'll give it more paint. We can just cover up here a little bit, just fill in the blank. Now, if you ever hear anybody talk about canvas or gallery wrap paintings, what they refer to, you guys, is these edges. So these edges up here, if you want to just blend in that paint, that just means this is a gallery wrap or a canvas wrap because it's continuing. If you guys want to turn your canvas to the other side, we can go ahead and just continue that color all the way out. And by doing that, we are doing a gallery wrap painting. Put that back in. Now from here, I'm feeling like we need to get a little bit more of that sky blue going. And again, this is going to be easy because all we got to do is just take our chip brush and we're going to give it a good solid dip into that blue. Load up that chip brush because it is thirsty. You guys see all that blue I just pulled up? Now we are going to just start close to where we left off and just kind of sweep. We're going to sweep back and forth. And remember, everybody's painting is going to look a little bit different and that's the way it's supposed to. And the other thing too I notice with you guys, especially beginners, 
is you guys tend to really get nervous and painting's not supposed to be something where you get really tense so sometimes I just tell people stop what you're doing and take a deep breath because it's supposed to be fun you guys don't don't take it too serious if you're taking too serious it's not fun so just remind yourself even as an adult sometimes I gotta tell myself take a deep breath and if you want you could just start lightly going over that line that you did before and just blend it in. Give it some streaks. Streaks are cool. I like streaks. Lots and lots of personality with streaks. And again, see how thirsty I started getting a little streaky over here? Well, my canvas is thirsty. So I'm going to go back and dip my brush again into the blue. And I'm just going to continue brush stroking that to the side. Kind of like a big giant U, you guys are. A wide U. You want to go, and what we're going to do is we're going to cover this entire canvas this way. So we're just working it back and forth. And the thing with acrylics, because that's what we're working with, we're using acrylics. Acrylics will dry really quick, which is nice, but it can also be frustrating. But this blending technique that we're doing has to be done while everything is wet. And you want it to stay wet because then it's going to blend even nicer. So again, I'm going to take my chip brush and I'm going to dip it in that blue. And I'm going to finish with my round, round U-shaped brush strokes. And we're just going to finish covering our entire canvas. You guys don't have to be as gentle as me. You could just get it on there. And remember, we're doing, well, for me, I want to do a canvas wrap or a gallery wrap. So I'm going to get my fingers dirty, but I'm going to lift it up. And I'm going to finish bringing that color to the sides of my canvas. Just because, you know what, it looks really cool when you hang it up. You see all that beautiful color even on the sides. Do the same thing to the sides. You're going to have to get your fingers dirty for this, guys. Sorry. No way around it. Just don't rub it on your clothes. Okay. And I'm going to leave the bottom alone just because we are going to do a different color. But I'm going to finish up this side over here. Just give it a little bit of paint. Okay. Now, see how easy that is, you guys? We already have half of our painting done already. It's just so simple. And this was just so that you guys can get comfortable with the idea that these acrylic paints blend so well. And you, I could actually, my room's pretty warm, so I could see that it's drying pretty quickly. And I want you guys to just, if you can, uh, give me a why on the chat just to let me know when you guys have your palette or your canvas completely covered with paint, give me a little why that lets me know that we can move on to the next step. And while I'm waiting for that, I think I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush really well. And you want to really get out that blue paint. Really, really clean up your paintbrush. And you can continue using this chip brush for other paintings. But we're pretty much done with our paint, our chip brush. And I'm just going to let that paper towel soak up any excess water. And I'm going to leave my chip brush right here. Pretty. Staring at my daughters right now. Very cool. She ended up doing a little side sweep. It looks really pretty ombre. You ever hear somebody use that term ombre? The word colors blend into each other. All right. I'm going to see if you guys have caught up. Okay. 
There is going to be a little pause here, you guys, because we do need to let this canvas dry a bit. If we start adding colors on top, it's going to bleed through. So what I'm going to say is use this as a break. You just cleaned out your chip brush and your water, and now this water is looking pretty blue. So we're going to use this time, if you guys can, to go and empty out your water cup and fill it with some fresh water. That's going to give us a little bit of time for our canvas to dry. I'm going to ask my lovely assistant if she can go dump that out and get me some fresh water. Beautiful work, Brianna. Ah, that is coming up next. My daughter just asked me, why do we have the color yellow? What a great question. Because I want you guys to get used to primary color mixing. That's all we're working with, only three colors. And those three colors are going to make a beautiful green. So hopefully you guys have gone and gotten some water. If not, don't worry. We are going to let these canvases dry a little bit more. Uh, right now, I'm just air drying my canvas. So you might want to blow on it, get a piece of paper, remember to breathe, relax, enjoy it, because you're already halfway there. And I hope it wasn't too hard to get to that point. I could show you, uh, can I show them yours, Brianna? Yeah. So Brianna did a little bit of an ombre version at the top. Oh, you're going to get your hands dirty, girl. Yeah, she's being very careful to touch it from the back. All right. So Brianna did this really cool ombre effect. You guys can see that. So instead of doing a circle, she decided to go a little bit ombre and get darker and darker, which is really nice. I like that a lot. It's very pretty. And remember, you guys, if you get those little tiny bristles, just go ahead and kind of scoop it out with your little brush. Because some of those guys will get loose and they'll get stuck on there. And once it's dried, it's permanent. It's staying in there. It's part of the picture. All right. So let's see, as soon as you guys give me a little bit more wise, we are going to start talking about our primary colors. Any questions at this point too? I like to answer any questions you guys might have. I know there's a little bit of a 15 second delay, so I think if you guys type, just give me about 15 seconds to answer. In the meantime, I'm just blowing my canvas and drying it off. You need to dry the canvas, just blow it. Some people, some people might have uh, their paint on there really thick. So just remember to just give it some extra air so it can dry. All right, I see a lot of Y's up there. That's awesome, you guys. I'm so glad. For me, still a little wet, definitely wet. So we're going to give it a few minutes and we're going to talk about what we're going to mix next. So everybody should have one of these little sheets. And this is a dry wax paper sheet. And this is perfect for mixing colors because it's not going to absorb your paint, and it's not going to dry it out that quick. Really, really cool. I think you can buy these at Sam's, Costco. They're usually used in deli markets. So we'll go ahead and we'll take one of our blending mats. And I'm going to switch screens so you guys can see what we are working with. We should have one. Okay. Here, you can use mine. Go for it. Now you guys see we only have 
three different colors going here. We got our yellow, our white, and our blue. Now if we move on from here, I want you guys to grab your number eight watercolor round brush. And that's this little black one that came in your kit. You guys can see my canvas is still a little shiny, it's still a little wet, but we're going to still dive in. So you guys see this has a nice little round tip. This is what's perfect for making our grass blades. Okay. Mm -hmm, that one. So if you guys can see the upper right hand corner, I'm going to start mixing some colors. I don't really need the white. I'm more focused on the yellow and the blue. And for the first round of blades, I think I'm gonna go a little darker. So I'm gonna pull some blue. Let's get a little bit more blue. And my yellow is not going to look so pretty now because I'm going to dip just a little bit of yellow into this blue. And we are going to make green. See that green? Nice dark green. I think I need a little bit more yellow to pull up that green. Yep, I like that green. And you know what? I like it even better when it's super streaky. Maybe a little bit more yellow. Because the streaks make it actually look more realistic. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and give ourselves, yeah, that's a good green. We're gonna give ourselves a nice green base. And what I mean by that is down here at that bottom, which I didn't paint below, I'm just going to add a line of green across. You can rotate. Yeah, your your, camp, your canvas isn't going to be fully dry right now. What we're doing is we're just creating a nice little area for our dandelions and grass blades to go on. So just put a little bit of green down there in the bottom. And I'm going to need a lot more green so I can make it up as I go. I just want to give myself some green down here. Get a little bit more paint loaded up and I want to paint, I'm going to lift this canvas up. That bottom that I didn't paint before, I now want to go ahead and fill in with my green paint, my dark green paint. I don't want to see any of those little white specks. Give it a good rub. Just really, really wash that paint in. And I feel like I need more paint, so I'm just going to create that green again. Create some more green. Remember, if it's streaky, even better. It looks more natural. Now I'm going to go and paint that side too. Paint those sides, all the sides, everywhere around. Go ahead and give it some nice green paint at the bottom. Okay, I put my finger on there, so I'm just gonna go over where my finger touched. I'm just gonna add some more green. Look at, I'm not even being perfect. Oh, because grass and hills are not perfect. beautiful. Remember, go ahead and just take a deep breath. This is the easy stuff. It's fun, you guys. All right. Now, we want to work on some of the grass blades. So I'm going to tell you guys, the further away the grass blades are from what you're looking at, the darker they're going to be. So we want to go ahead and make more 
of this dark gray, I'm sorry, no, gray, dark green right here. We want to make those for our blades in the backdrop. So let's go ahead and add some more paint. Let's go ahead and recreate that dark green again. Are you doing it, baby? Oh. <laughs> let's go ahead and just get that dark green going. All right. Now, I really, really loaded up a lot of paint on my paintbrush. I kind of want to wipe off a little bit of the paint because I don't want it to be too thick. And I'll get a piece of paper for you guys because right now we're going to do some blades. So what I want you guys to do, I'm going to do this sideways, is what we're doing is you're going to rest your number eight brush down and just start dragging it up and you're going to flick it. Just a nice little flick. Lift up your hand. Give it a good flick. And we're going to get it nice. We're going to put a little pressure down. And as we go up, we're going to release that pressure and we're going to flick. So that's what I want you guys to do for these grass blades. Put a lot of pressure and then come up and then flick. I'm going to try to do it. So put pressure down, come up, and flick. And the thing is, is this is a this is a no-no. See, grass usually isn't perfectly straight like that. What we like to see is your curved grass blades. So when you go up, flick and go to the side. Flick and turn to the side. You don't want grass that looks completely straight. That doesn't look real. So let's go ahead. Dip our brush into this green and just start going for it. So we're going to go down at the bottom and I'm going to just flick. Come over here, just start, no rhyme or reason, just start flicking. Maybe fill that in a little bit. Yeah, and you guys, if you have a different technique, if there's something that looks better than another way of doing it, it's your own personal preference. Just start at the bottom, though. Work your way up and lift. And if it looks if it looks a little transparent, you can go over it again. But remember, we're using that dark dark green right now because the dark green is for the blades of grass that are far away. Get a little bit more paint on the brush. Because remember, we're talking about shadows now. The further away it is, the darker it is. And as the blades get closer to us, they're going to get lighter and lighter, and we're going to see that beautiful sun or moonlight hitting it, and that's going to give us our highlights and make it look even more realistic. And I mean, go off, you can go off to the side, you can even kind of have it continue off on the side of your canvas like a gallery wrap. I'm giving it lots of color. And again, on my canvas, I'm, I tend to kind of go a little bit higher on the right side of my canvas just because I want it to be taller grass blades going down to a little bit of shorter grass blades because we're going to focus on one main dandelion blowing in the wind. And I see that my color isn't really showing that well on the camera. It kind of looks grayish, but it's green. I'll have to adjust that later. Now, what I want to do is focus on the blades that are going to be closest to us. So I'm really going to go in here with the yellow and just grab a huge gob of yellow and work it into the paint that I already have because I really want a nice, vibrant green. You see that? See how bright that green is? It's pretty. And again, if it's streaky, even better. <clears throat> streaky is nice. Everything's got multi 
multicolor is multi-dimension. It's not all plain. And again, I'm just going to take that blades of grass and just work my way. Remember, curve, curve your blades of grass if you can. Have it go all the way to the bottom. You guys don't want to forget the bottom. Let's have some grass over here. And you guys realize the lighter your touches on this round brush, you're just going to get the very, very tip. If you want it to be a really thin blade, just put very, very little pressure and drag it down. That's another method. You could put a little bit of pressure and then more pressure as you drag down. A little bit of pressure, more pressure as you drag down. And that kind of will give you a nice little tip on your blades. We'll get some more paint. I'm going to fill it in because usually there's a lot of grass in one area. It's never boring. Lots of stuff going on. You usually don't see <clears throat> holes through your grass, do you? Because there's so much of it. So I'm just going to curve them around. Give it a little bit more on the bottom. Hopefully you guys are all keeping up. Seems like it. All right. And I'm going to ask if you guys can give me another Y or an H if you need me to hold on or move forward. It's up to you. Just kind of let me know where you guys are at right now. Y means let's move on. H means hold on, still trying to get my blades going. And if your brush is getting a little too thick, go ahead and clean it out. Just make sure you soak up as much water as possible with that napkin providing. Ooh, it's back to being fluffy. You want to take your finger and just kind of twist and roll it into your finger. Get that point back. Before we go back in. Okay. Now what I want to do is focus on the dandelions. And it doesn't get much easier than this, you guys. I want to give it a little bit of a stem. So what I'm going to do, actually, you know, I'll, I'll use this one. So what, what we'll do is let's take that number eight brush again, and we're going to create a little bit deeper of a green again. A little bit more yellow. Roll that tip if you want it nice and pointed. And I think I'm going to place my first dandelion pretty high right here and just very lightly I'm going to give it a little stem. Something to work off of. A little stem. And my second dandelion, maybe he's popping out right here. It's almost just like another blade. But this one I'm designating. I'm just making sure. Well, let's go ahead and just make another one right here. Looks good. Okay. All right, you guys, at this point, we can go ahead and clean off our number eight brush. We're not really going to use him anymore, not until we sign our name. 
and we're going to grab some Q-tips. There should be about four Q-tips in each bunch, rubber band together. And I want you guys to just take these Q-tips and ever so lightly just dip them, just the tips, just dip those tips into the white paint. And you see I have way too much paint on here. So what I want you guys to do before you get putting them on your canvas, I want you to take those Q-tips and start blotting them all over your wax paper where you mixed your paint so that you get most of the paint off. And what we're going to do is we're going to start, let's start from our left to our right. That's just how I'm going to start it. And I just want to start pressing it down firmly, lifting it up clean. And we're going to start making a little circle. So with those little clusters, I want you guys to kind of make a circle. Make sure you're pushing down firmly, lifting up, push down, lift up, push down, lift up, push down, lift up. If you guys notice that your paint's getting a little too dry, go back in, dip your paint. What's up? Did a good job. Yeah, so you guys just get a little bit extra paint and make sure you're blotting that off. All that extra paint before you go back in. And just give yourself a few extra. There we go. I'm going to say that's about the size of a half dollar. Okay, we have a few holds. So this process is, I mean, you could take as long as you want. You can continue on. You see how it's kind of uh, getting a little torn up in my tips of my, my cotton swabs. That's fine. If they start getting really, really frayed, I think these are still good. I'm going to use them. If they get really frayed, all you got to do is just flip them over to the clean side and make sure you dip and then get all the excess off by just dipping it on your wax paper and then moving on to your next dandelion. So let's just get a little bit of white paint again on our Q-tip. And we're going to go ahead and blot off the excess on our wax paper. And that second dandelion I'm putting right here. Remember, push firmly, lift up. Push firmly, lift up. As long as you don't have too much paint. Just right. And you know, none of us can make perfect circles. We are working with Q-tips here, guys. But, you can make a perfect circle. I will be super impressed. It's still hard for me too. But again, we're just having fun. This is relaxing. Look it. I got a dandelion and I want to pull it and make a wish. But that's our next one. So don't make a wish yet. Now for this big dandelion over here, I'm thinking it's going to take up a good portion of the top, but I don't want to quite do a perfect circle. So have you guys ever seen the Pac-Man? You know what a Pac-Man looks like? That little dude that's got his mouth open, he likes chomping on guys. That's kind of the shape we're going for, and I'll show you right now. So we'll take, if you have a clean side of your Q-tips, and we're going to dip some paint, and we'll just kind of dab some paint off. And I want you guys just to kind of start on the bottom, press down, and kind of just take those and make a big, make a U shape right now. 
That's what I want to see. I want to see a big U shape. A big horseshoe if you can. Give me a big horseshoe. It's like a big U if you don't know what a horseshoe is. A big U. Now from here, I'm going to get a little bit more paint on my Q-tips. And I want to fill in just a little bit in the middle. Because I want it to look like the wind is picking it up and taking away my wish. So it, right now it kind of looks, if you guys know what a crescent moon is, kind of looks like a crescent moon, huh? And then once we get to this point, we get to take one of these lucky guys, pick anyone, and we're going to take them out away from the others because we are going to use only him. And what you're going to do is just, again, I wouldn't necessarily dip him straight into the white paint. Maybe the paint that was off to the side that you were dipping onto your wax paper. Just get a very, very small amount on the tip. And we're going to kind of work a blowing pattern. So when the wind blows, I'm not, I'm going to go a little different. I'm not going to have my wind blow straight. Maybe you will. But I like my wind to just kind of have a little wave to it. So I'm going to start from this top. And just with one, I'm going to kind of trace out where exactly I want my wind to start blowing my wishes. And my wind just so happened to blow it up and over. Yours can do that. Yours can. You can make it straight however you want. I'm going to go back, get a little bit of paint, just a smidge on the top of my Q-tip. And we're going to just add a few more blowing in that wind. Just be random with it. Okay, there's a few stragglers. They're doing whatever they want. Maybe some up here. Carry it down. Just making a wish. And if you want, you can just take that individual one and kind of clean up your circle if you want. If you want to make it a little bigger, now's the time. Just add a few on the outside. I'll make it look a little bigger. This is the time you guys can just use to perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect though. But I know you guys like to go over things. Add a few more things blowing in the wind, making your wish. And for me, I'm feeling pretty good about this painting. I don't want to do too much to it because sometimes when you overthink a painting, you just start layering more things on and then you get really frustrated because you keep adding to it. So sometimes simple is exactly that. It's perfect. It's simple. So I want to see how far along you guys are. Give me a why if you guys have pretty much gotten your shape of your dandelions and you are happy and content with it. And you know what? Some of you guys might not have perfectly shaped dandelions. They might look like beautiful white flowers in a beautiful field. That's kind of what my daughter did over here. She went and she did a beautiful field of white flowers and she did some petals blowing off into the wind. And I like that. It's different. I'll show you guys in a little bit. But if you guys have gotten to this part right here. You guys have a few options. What you guys can do is you can sign your name with using a Q-tip. 
and you can maybe just roll that Q-tip up again and you can just put a little bit of white paint and I would just do in this corner uh, your initials because you know every artist has to sign his piece of artwork and I know your parents are going to want to hang up that beautiful piece of artwork so what I'm going to do is I am going to initial down below here I'm going to write LL. Just those are my initials. But if you guys don't want to use a Q-tip, you guys can use your number eight. It is a little bit of a thicker brush to use. So if you want, you can also wait for your entire canvas to dry. I'll give it an hour, and then you could take a permanent marker and just write your initials at the lower, at the lower part. You can write it over here, anywhere you guys want. But this is your original artwork. Now remember, it's not going to look like mine. I'll go ahead and show you guys what my daughter's looks like. Yeah, no, I want to show them. You guys, and you guys need to see. Everybody's going to look different. So, see the the reference photo looks a little different than the one I just did now, and my daughter did this beautiful display of white flowers. And of course, she wants to touch it up right now. So she's trying to perfect it. She's overthinking it, remember? Breathe, relax. It's fun. You guys just made a really cool, simple painting. Now, look at this. See, this is my daughter's. So we did, it's beautiful. So we did a white flower field. She wants you to see it closer. Oh, and we definitely got finger, we got paint all over our fingers. So this is Bree Bree's piece of art. I don't know if she wants to sign it yet or if she wants to wait for it to dry. She didn't do all the paint. So this is a time where if your brushes are, if you've got them cleaned off and you guys want to go back and you guys want to finish painting your sides so that everything blends, no. <laughs> now would be the time to go back and just make sure all those edges blend. Okay, I'm going to take that back over there. Ooh, I know it's getting hot in here. All right, guys. So right now I just want to see where you guys are all at. I would absolutely love to see your pictures. You know, if you guys do have Facebook or your parents have Facebook, if they can take a snapshot and just go to RR Paint Nights on Facebook, or you can just type in Rosina Ranch Paint Nights, I believe, on Google, and it should take you to our Facebook. And then just go ahead and do a post and show me your picture. I would absolutely love that. Are you waiting for somebody to say something to you? She's checking out your guys' chat. But that's it. It was just that easy, you guys. That simple to make this painting. So anybody have any questions right now you guys want to ask? What I will be doing is, um, on the weekends, is usually Friday night, I'll go ahead and put together a painting for you guys to see what it's going to be for the following Tuesday. Thursday nights, it's going to be more of a regular painting. It's going to be a little bit more difficult, but you guys, it's still simple. So if you feel like you're getting more comfortable with blending these acrylics, it's going to be a really fun class. We're going to do a lot of really cool techniques. Even in this class, we're going to start doing some more tracing onto pre-painted pre canvases and do some really cool stuff with that. Um, maybe using different types of brushes, uh, carbon paper, some really cool stuff. So, let's see. Anybody have questions? How did you guys feel? Do you guys feel like, do you guys like your painting? I want to get some feedback, you guys. I really want to see your pictures. And I know YouTube, I can't really see it. That's why I'm asking if your parents could. I would absolutely love it. You guys post those up on Nextdoor or Facebook. <laughs> We're still figuring out our easel. <laughs> it's okay. Just be careful with your fingers. 
So again, uh, if you guys are wanting to join us for Thursday night's painting, it's a little bit more advanced, but I'm going to give you guys a link to that. And probably going to be summer themed. We'll probably do something really cool when it comes to 4th of July, something patriotic. You know, I... I just hope you guys feel a bit more comfortable with using acrylics. I know, look at how I got paint all over my fingers. And you know what? Some weeks, I think we're going to go ahead and do some finger blending. And you would be surprised how amazing our fingers are when it comes to making clouds. Like, there's no paintbrush out there that can do the same thing that our fingers can. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, if you guys want to give me ideas on what you would like to see, I'm all ears. Like I said, if you guys also missed this, you can always come back. I'm going to keep this video up so you guys can continue along if you missed it. Or if you guys weren't able to finish it, had to leave, come back after, and it will be up here for all of eternity on YouTube. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to stay on here for about another minute because I'm here to answer any questions. All right. Yay! You know, yep, I can see that. I think that's where my daughter got. She was overthinking the dandelions. It ended up eventually becoming a beautiful field of white flowers. That happens. And as far as picking up your paints, yes, um, I'm going to get more onto a permanent schedule where it's going to be Mondays and Wednesdays. You guys are going to have two different times, an afternoon and the evening time to pick up supplies if you guys want. Um, those I'll be posting. If you guys are interested, you can email me at rrpaintnights at gmail.com. And that way I will email blast you guys links, pictures of what we're going to be working on, pickup times. So, <laughs> it's all good over here. Okay, good. Yay. Again, I would love to see those pictures. If you guys could post those up on Facebook. I think if you click on the About in the YouTube, you'll be able to find a Facebook link. And that will take you to my Facebook. And you guys can go ahead and post pictures. And I will respond to you guys there. But, yay. Yeah, finger painting. All right. Oh my goodness. I got a little goober over here. <laughs> but you guys have a great night. I will see some of you guys back again on Thursday. I hope there wasn't any glitches or buffering on my end or your end. And I hope you guys have fun. Okay. Can you say bye? Can you say bye? Oh, this is her way of saying goodbye. She says,